Okay, so welcome back to part two of using a UBD to, um, to plan your lesson. We, in the previous video, we gathered our necessary documents. We gathered the year back. When I unpack my teeks right here, before I get to this essential questions, there's a step that I missed. If you have a star release question, if you have a uh, teaching a content that ha is, a, is a star or ELC tested area, once you unpack that teach, you need to stop what you're doing and go to the release test. So you go to that, um, to that uh, lead forward. Go to resources. And at the top, go to IQ. And you put in those specific information. Uh, this is science, let's say biology. We did this in the last video. Go to student expectations. And I'll pick my SE, uh, whatever it is. I'm going to just put 4B. And then I will select all the years that they offer just because I want to see how they tested this particular teeth every time they tested it, as far back as they can. So in this particular case, oh, this particular case, they did not. That's not in there. I don't know if um, Lee Ford is behind on. They did reconfigure uh, their website. So I think maybe some of their um, teeth haven't been, um, some of the stuff is not updated. So sorry about that. I shouldn't have just randomly chose something. I looked at 9A, so I'm going to choose 9A because <laughs> I know there's something there for 9A. I've looked at that recently. Um, so now I can look and see on the, uh, let me pull something up real quick. I'm going to pull up the, um, the uh, snapshot. And I want to look at what 9A actually says. Here it says that 9A, 9A for biology, the students will compare the functions of different types of biomolecules, including carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So they're expected to compare. That's my verb. And the, what are they comparing? The functions of different types of biomolecules. And what's the context dealing with carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids? Okay. Now, that's great, that's pretty good, but how does that look on a test? This is why uh, the release test questions is very important because now I can see exactly how they've been tested. So I'm just gonna kind of glance through this real quick. So here's one question, here's another one. Oh, there's a graphic. It actually shows the structure. And here, oh, here's a chart. Oh, here is a, um, well, I guess it would be a table if you connected these things in table form. This one, this is the second one that doesn't have any kind of visual. Oh, here goes another visual. Ah, here goes another visual. This one doesn't have it. So it's three so far with no visual, four so far with no visual, five, six. Here's another visual. So what I've discovered is that um, six of the problems are all the problems they've done in the last few years. Only six of them did not have a visual. So that means that um, when I construct my lessons and construct my questions, a good portion of the, the questions need to have, or the lesson need to have some kind of graphic. I noticed that. And then I can go and I can look at the um, actual test question and see how they're asking them. When they say compare, well, how are they expecting them to compare them? I can read that and, and, and actually analyze it, break down the question. I can go over here and look and see um, how the, the students within the state of Texas fared on that particular question. The um, correct answer is marked with a star. I can see, oh, 78% of them got, got it right. And this incorporates the process skill also, in addition to uh, it being a readiness um, standard. And I look at each one of those things. This is another one. The second question has a processing standard. So both the first two have processing standard. Oh, there's another one with a processing standard. And there, oh, nope, I was going to say another one. So, so far, three out of four of the questions not only had the red, not only had the, um, the, um, S, had a regular SC, but it also tested a processing standard. So as I go and look at these questions, I can see how they ask them about this particular piece, how they're questioned. This is invaluable, and it's not a step that should be missed or should be skipped. The only people who are somewhat disadvantaged are the teachers who do not, who are not in a tested area, because what you would need to do is probably pull other common assessments that they've done, that um, they've been given previous years. 
Some of them you made them, some of them be made by the district. So see if you can get a hold of some of the release questions to see how this particular teach is tested. That's a math form. Now let's go down to the actual document. <clears throat> What I would do is I would um, go to Schoology and I'll um, download the UBD and then I would actually place it in a Google document as a Google document. And the reason why is because I think that when you're working on this, everyone who is um, who is in the room needs to be in this document. It is not one person who is responsible for this. This is the lesson plan for the entire team. They can make modifications to their own, but when we're working, everyone needs to see it. Everyone needs to have access to it. Everyone needs to be um, a present. And then all you have to do is just start typing, you know, and add it in. And as people, um, as you go through from one thing to the next, you just type the information. So we'll fill out stage one. Remember, we'll identify the teaks right here. Then we'll go and we'll unpack the text down here. We'll identify the verb, the content, and the context. And then we'll break it down into simpler steps. And then once we finish that, if it's a tested area, we'll go back to lead forward and we'll pull up the questions just to see how they're going to be asked. Because if I can see how those questions look, now I can better pick the essential questions that will guide the students to being able to, uh, to answer those questions on the ELC. It's very important. Do not miss that step. Once I identify the answers, uh, the questions from um, the IPG, then I can go and answer those questions to my the best of my ability. What I want to make sure I do is I I write out exactly what I want them to actually say when they're answering the question. Will they always say it? No. That's why you're there because you're going to keep probing them and you're going to try to get them to answer the question the way that you want them to answer it. So once you do that, you're going to go and identify some products. Remember, or some formative assessments. Remember, you can go into the IPG. It has a lot of examples available to you. So do not, um, if somebody sat down and worked on that and they got paid for that. So make sure you utilize that because it is a tool that is very helpful um, and it should be helpful. Once you do that, now you can go back and, and, um, and you can relate it to real life. Put that information here. What can, what is, where does this uh, appear in real life? Um, and then create your PBL and identify all the pieces of the PBL. Um, it's a lot of information, but it is not meant to be done solo. So you utilize your team. The last thing that you do is what we're used to being, uh, seeing as a lesson plan. Stage three is your day to day. So I've already kind of, uh, outlined, I've used the UBD, which is the understanding by design, which is back backwards, um, um, planning. I've come up with the final product. This is what the teaks. This is my beginning, my final product is my end, and now I'm going to try to piece everything together and break it down so that I can meet, I can make sure that the students are meeting that goal at the end. Everything I do is to make sure that they meet that goal, and that's where this comes into place. Now, if by chance this is going to take more than one week, you can always copy this and, and paste another week on there. In fact, I would suggest you do this. Don't try to do a different form every week if you're covering basically the same concept <coughs> or the same um, unit. And then the way that it's situated here is all we're asking for is um, you to identify your lesson plan frame. So what are you planning on modeling? What are you planning on um, to modeling to the students or doing directly teaching to the students? What are you what are you going to what are you doing to introduce this or to um, introduce information? That's what you put right here or for I do. What we do is, this is you guiding the students in doing something. Right here, you're doing a lot of it. You don't want to, keep, you don't want to stay in this area for too long. Now, what are you doing with the students? What are they actually having to do with your guidance? And after you identify that, what are you doing having them do independently or within groups? Okay? Collaboratively and or independently. I would say all of these need to be done in a day. I do, we do, you do, but the you do needs to be split up into something that they do with a partner or a group, but then something they do independently so that you can check for their understanding. Um, if you had homework, you can put it right here. But that's pretty much all that you need to have in your lesson plan. Can you put more in here? Yes. Because you may hit a whole bunch of stuff. Like I have a, I always put an agenda in my lesson plan because that keeps me organized. So I may end up talking about, uh, 
add my bell ringer in there, which is not necessarily an I do, we do, or you do, or I may add um, some, something else like I have to review, which is not necessarily in this framed lesson, but I add it in there because it helps me to stay organized. This, once you do it as a team, if you do your I do, we do, and you do as a team, you can always go back and modify it if you have some changes within your classroom. In fact, you need to make sure that everything is personalized. The stage one and stage two pretty much will be the same because you're planning as a team. You may have a few more products that, um, that here than somebody else because you just want to make sure you incorporate this product. But for the most part, all this other stuff is going to be the same. So uh, make sure that once you guys have um, filled this out, that the that your parties, this is what's shared to your appraiser uh, and your uh, coach or coordinator. But each member needs to make a copy of this so that they can make uh, personalize it and then upload it to their uh, Edu4U um, for thought. Um, hopefully this helps. I mean, it was a it's extensive, but these are the um, every every one of these things that's on here is. Is a value, so please don't cheat and um, and skip any sections because if you skip some of the sections, you'll see that some things maybe may fall through the cracks. You want to make sure that you always know what the end looks like, and and the end is predicated off of the teeth. So, so that's the beginning, and then is this in here, the meat of it that some, can sometimes get a little foggy also. So um, that's the ending of. Um, well, hold on, let's review. <laughs> let's review our uh, stages. So our stage one is identifying your teaks. Start there, that's what we start with. You then uh, pack it and you examine those release questions if you are in a tested area. And then you determine your essential questions. You go back into the IPG, just grab, them, um, grab some questions there that lend to the way that they're gonna be tested that will guide them to this. Um, can you make up your own questions? By all means, you can make everything up if you want to. But we want to make sure we work smarter, not harder, because, um, you know, the job of a teacher is exhaustive. I'm using that word a lot, but it's because it's, it's applicable. Um, and you want to answer those essential questions. Now, for stage two, you want to identify the products that could be used um, to check for understanding and any types of uh, activities, that formative assessments that you can, that you plan to use. Identify some real world application of your um, concept and then create a PBL that links the content to the real world. And your stage three is your chunks of lessons. So you know the beginning of it, you know the ending of it. Now you got to break things apart, scaffold things so that you can build the students up to being able to accomplish that product at the end. The product is not just a test. The product is anything that people should, at this point, you should be able to answer these questions right here comprehensively um, and then you need to uh, create that daily lesson for the create the daily lesson frames because these lesson frames are expected to be posted on your uh, board every day every day every day this lets the students know from the get-go we have stuff to do we come in here and we work and unless any visitor coming in know this is a working class okay so that seems to be a very long um, a trend so I what I would do is I'm going to make one more part and this third part would be the part where we actually create the lesson itself so until then thank you very much <laughs>